All right, so today we're going to talk about cinemagraphs. It's basically taking a video that has motion in it, and you're going to single out the motion parts and create kind of an illusion of time being kind of frozen still, um, but at the same time, uh, you're still going to have some motion and animation happening. So here is kind of an example of what that could look like. Um, and here's Times Square, and you have the um, the crowd is basically um, at a standstill. No traffic is moving, but all the flashing and the things happening in the um, top parts of the video or in the billboards are moving. So there is an example of what that would look like. Um, now, first steps is basically for is to have your your video, and for this practice. This is typically what we do as a practice one first, um, is um, download your video first. And so locate your video, whether it's your own or the one that's provided for, um, for an assignment. Um, make sure that you, your video is downloaded. And so we'll make sure you go to the link, go to the download button, and download that video. So here we go. Here is basically what this looks like. You'll go to download the start video, hit the download button here, choose where you want it to go, and right now source video is okay, um, and I'm going to save that. Once it shows up there, you're all good. So, um, next steps, basically you're going to go to Photoshop, open this up, and you're going to go to file, open and locate your source video. And so this is the one that we're using to start off with. Um, and then you can start using your own videos later. So here we go. I'm going to open this and you'll notice that it opens it as a video because that is what it is. And you'll see that it shows a video group and a layer one. Um, Going down the list of instructions here, we're going to ungroup this first layer. So I'm going to right click on this video group one and go to ungroup layers. And there we go. It's left out in the open now. And now I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to right click on it again and go up here to duplicate layer. Just leave it as layer one copy. That's fine. There we go. So those first four steps are basically done. Um, the fifth step basically says we're going to trim layer one in the timeline. So if you look down here, it basically resembles exactly the layers that we have over here. So layer one in the timeline is here, and it says we're going to trim that down. Now you have a slider down at the bottom where you can adjust the size of your timeline components. And so I can see here um, just how long it is. I can press the space bar, and it will play the whole video. You can see it's a time-lapse video of Times Square, so that's why it looks very chaotic. I can hit the space bar again to stop it, and I can use this little playhead guy and move this back and forth as I need to. Okay, so we're going to select layer one down here, and I'm going to right-click on this playhead, which is this blue guy right here, and I'm going to click on go to time. And the time I'm going to put in here is basically the same except I'm going to put 7 right here. And the reason is because this is a start frame that we're going to begin with. So it's a minor, minor difference here. You can see just how little it actually moved. If I scroll in, you'll see, it, or zoom in, I guess I should say, zoom in here. You can see it only moved this from here to here. Not a big difference. It's on the seventh frame, basically. Now, with layer one, I'm going to move the, my mouse to the edge of it right here, and I'm going to see the little brackets show up, and I'm going to click on that and drag it to that red line, just like that. Um, so now, and it kind of snaps into place. You can kind of see it snap right there. Um, now what I'm going to do is create some opacity layers. Okay, So we want part of this to be basically um, transparent. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to select layer one, copy, and in the timeline panel right here, 
this little twisty arrow right here, twist down, and you can see you have other options down below here. I can bring this up so I can see all my options here. So here's my here are my options for the layer one copy. Um, and what I'm going to do is um, right click on the playhead. I want to make sure that it is set at the correct time. It is at zero 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 seven, and click. OK, just want to make sure if that got moved, make sure it's still in place and it's still in line with layer one. Um, I'm going to click on the stopwatch here next to opacity. And what this means is it's going to start keying frames. So I have it set there um, and it's set. Uh, now I know I have a keyframe here and I'm going to drag this timeline to the end. I'm going to zoom out so I can see the end. I'm going to drag this to the end of my video. Now I want to change the opacity over here to zero. Okay, so you can't see those changes happening here really because there's a background layer that's also animating. Um, but now you can kind of see what that looks like. Um, on this right here, to there. So nothing really changes because there's an, a copy of this layer down below. Um, but we need this layer visible. And we'll see why later. Um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is take a still image of this. So I'm going to zoom out the control minus on my keyboard. And I'm gonna use my rectangle marquee tool. And what I'm gonna do is move this um, to the very beginning. Now I can see my time is at the very beginning. Um, and I'm going to take a still image here. I'm gonna click my with my rectangle marquee tool, drag over the whole thing. And I'm gonna to go to edit, copy, edit, paste and now I have another layer over here in my panel layers panel and with that what I'm going to do is create a um, uh, well not yet I'm going to extend this to the end of my video so now my layer 2 shows up here I'm going to grab that end of that and drag it over to the end and basically that is step 8 on our assignment you're following along on what we're going to do now is add a layer mask so a layer mask is right here so there we go and the next step i'm going to do is um, make sure that layer two is selected and do that now i'm going to set the colors for my foreground background so they should be black as the foreground white as the background um, if your colors have been changed uh, you can reset them by pressing D on your keyboard. Um, and if you want to switch them, you can press X and see how it switched the black to the front. So you can go back and forth, toggling X, those two back and forth. Um, so I want the black as the foreground, which it is now, and white as the background. Now what I can do while my layer mask is selected, I, can, I have four different ways that you can um, select your objects that you want to mask and show movement through. Uh, one way is to uh, use the brush tool and you can do that. You would wanna make sure that your brush is 100% on hardness and that will create a very straight edge, very straight edge brush mark. Um, another option that you can use is the rectangle marquee tool. Um, you can also use the um, lasso tool or the polygon lasso tool or right here and you can brush through certain areas or you can select areas like this um, and close groups like that and brush in the inside i did not make a very good selection there so i might be a little bit um, 
careful. So if I'm brushing through this, I can do this. And here's an example. I have that there. I can now use a paint bucket tool and paint the inside. And I see a little bitty speck show up here, which means if I go to play or hit spacebar on my keyboard, I can see now that one area is being animated through. So basically what you've done with the mask is put a cover over it. And now you're poking holes through the cover to see the animated parts that you want to see. So I'm going to go through and this tool is actually really nice to use for this project. So let's say I want to create another animation on this one here. So I'm going to outline this. And I know it's closed when that little circle pops up. And now I can use my paint bucket tool, paint inside. Nothing really changes right here. So, which is kind of confusing. You won't know that it's actually done until you actually look at your mask or you actually play through here. So now, pretty simple, but that's a good effective way of poking holes essentially through this mask. So go through and check out the video and see where those animated parts are that you want to show. Uh, one way to check is to turn this layer off and scrub through here and you can see the animated screens that pop up. Now be careful, there's some parts that are reflections on the buildings you don't necessarily have to do, but some of the major scenes that you see here, those are, or screens that you see, are ones that can be masked out and you can animate on top of those. I always forget this little guy up here. So check that out and complete the steps for um, poking the rest of the holes through this mask. So make sure that you are selected on this mask layer and turn this back on. Make sure that this is rewound to the front and then start poking more holes using your tools. And um, what we'll do is um, once you're finished there, we're gonna shorten the video. And so take some time to do that first part and then restart this when you're ready. Um, I'm gonna assume that you have all of your layers poked through or all of your uh, um, parts of your mask poked through so that animation shows. Now what you're gonna do is go through and move um, the current time. I'm gonna shorten this video. So I'm gonna move the current time and I can do that by double clicking on this. And, um, Oh, actually, I'll right click on this and go to time. And I'm going to put 5, 1, 14. And that moves it right down the line here. I'm going to move my end slider to that very specific time, like that. And so my animation is only going to be this long, which is okay. Now, um, I'm going to use my type tool. And you're going to put your name on here. And so choose type, select an area. I'm going to put Mr. Fulton, and you can leave it like that, or you can make it a different color if you want to. You can go through and, and change your, your type settings. Um, say I want it white instead, and maybe I want it to be kind of transparent, so I'm going to change this as well, so it's not as evident. So I've got my name in the bottom corner there, which is great. Um, now, what I'm going to do is save this whole project and I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm going to change this to um, Times Square. And click Save on that. Say OK. Good. So that's saved. And now what I'm going to do is export an animation of this. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Save for Web. This window pops up. You want to make sure that this first option, it's going to take a while because this is an animation now. I'm going to have to save a lot of different frames. So, sorry about the uh, construction for right now. Wait for this, for this to load. All right, so it's all loaded up. And we want to make sure that this says GIF or GIF, whichever way you prefer. And this is the size of our image. 
what we're going to do is shrink this down to 25% right here, and then hit enter. And now it's going to shrink it down. It's going to take some time for that to save as well. Okay, so now that's saved in the right size. Um, I'm going to make sure that this says looping forever because that's what a GIF or GIF is. And now I'm going to go to save. Um, save it as Times Square GIF or GIF. And I'm going to hit save on that. And it already exists. I'm just going to say replace it. And that's fine. And once that's saved, make sure that you can go through and locate where that is saved to. And let's see here. I've got several different ones. I am in the wrong folder. So I need to be in this one. Here's my Times Square GIF or GIF. I'm going to open this up. And I only did these two. You should have many, many more um, selected and masked through. And it should play through pretty much just like this. So um, that is pretty much it for now. Um, and this would be what you submit as well as your Photoshop file. And that is all. So um, there we go. And we'll see you next time.